This is AP Bio Review 3. This video will discuss cellular respiration. Uh, basically, cell respiration is a series of chemical reactions that take place inside of the cell, and the overall goal is to create energy, or ATP. Um, before we get started with the lecture for this video, there's some key vocab words you should know. ATP is the energy that, that's being created in cell respiration, and that's adenosine triphosphate. Um, then there's two processes called oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is when you lose or give away electrons. Reduction is when you gain or accept electrons. Aerobic respiration is without the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration is with the presence of oxygen. Glucose is a 6-carbon molecule. Its formula is C6H12O6. Pyruvate is a 3-carbon molecule, and um, it, it's basically half of a glucose. This slide is very important. You should definitely memorize the formula for cellular respiration, which is C6H12O6 plus 6O2, which yields 6 waters, 6 carbon, di uh, carbon dioxides, plus energy. This is a very important formula to remember. Um, this is basically what this whole uh, presentation will be about. And it's also a very common test question asked. Um, another very common test question asked is the difference between photosynthesis and aerobic respiration. You see the two formulas on the bottom there, right here. Um, these formulas are basically the opposites. So for photosynthesis, you have six carbon dioxide, six water, and energy on the on the reactant side, and the products you get are glucose and six oxygens. And aer aerobic respiration is basically the opposite of that. It's you see the reacting products are just split. So it's important to know these two different um, chemical equations for the AP Bio exam. Uh, this chart's very important because it basically summarizes everything that happens during cellular respiration. There are four main events that happen, glycolysis, pyruvate, uh, dehyd dehydrogenase complex, the Krebs cycle, and, and the electron tra transport chain or the oxidative phosphorylation. It's important to know where each event happens the substrates involved, the products that get yielded, and whether it's aerobic or anaerobic respiration. Glycolysis happens in cytoplasm. The substrates are glucose and two ATPs. Products are two pyruvates, two ATP, two NADH, and there's no oxygen required. Uh, PDC happens in the matrix of the mitochondria. The substrate is pyruvate. The products are acetyl coenzyme A, NADH, and, and carbon dioxide, and oxygen is required. Krebs cycle happens in the matrix of the mitochondria. The substrates are acetyl coenzyme A, oxalacetic acid, and products are oxalacetic acid, 3NADH, 1ATP, 1FADH2, and carbon dioxide, and oxygen is required. Lastly, for the, for the electron transport chain or the oxidative phosphorylation, it happens in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Substrates involved are NADH, FADH2, ADP, and PI, and products are NAD, FAD, ATP, and oxygen is required. Um, glycolysis is the first main event we're, we're going to look into. Basically, glucose is a six-carbon molecule, and it gets split up into half to form two pyruvates, and each pyruvate is a three-carbon molecule. Basically, in glycolysis, you get um, four ATPs, but to undergo glycolysis, it requires two ATPs. Just the whole process requires two ATPs. So the net gain for glycolysis is two ATPs. So you get two net ATPs when glycolysis is done with. Glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. It is anaerobic, meaning it does not require oxygen. Um, and right here, this bottom formula is important to know because this is the formula for glycolysis. You get uh, glucose plus 2 ATP plus 2 NAD plus yields 2 pyruvates, 4 ATPs, and 2 NADHs. The next thing we're going to discuss is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, which is PDC. Basically, PDC are enzymes that prepare the pyruvate, which is 3-carbon, to enter the Krebs, the Krebs cycle, which is really important to know because the Krebs cycle only accepts 2-carbon compounds. So before the pyruvate, the 3-carbon compound can get into the Krebs cycle, it needs to become a 2-carbon compound. And this is done because the PDC removes 1-carbon through uh, in, the form, in the form of carbon dioxide, and it attaches the remaining two carbons that are left to coenzyme A. So basically, um, the coenzyme A and the two carbons 
um, get passed on to the Krebs cycle. You also get two NADH molecules as a byproduct. And the, and the location is important to know. It happens in the mitochondrial matrix. Um, this is the Krebs cycle. You should be familiar with the overall look of the Krebs cycle, but it's not necessary to memorize each and every single step of it. Basically, for every glucose, which is the six carbons, we have two pyruvates, which are three carbons, and thus two acetyl coenzymes. So the Krebs cycle runs twice for each and every glucose molecule. Um, basically, this is an overview of the, of the Krebs cycle. Um, acetyl coenzymes is combined with, with um, oxaloacetic acid to form citric acid. Uh, citric acid is then broken down one carbon at a time. Um, basically, then it rearranges to form the original oxalic acid molecule. And basically, in this process, the three molecules of NADH, one molecule of FADH2, and one molecule of ATP are made. Um, also, you see carbon dioxide is released as well. Um, that's basically the main things you should know for the Krebs cycle. Lastly, the fourth one is the electron transport chain or oxidative phosphorylation. Basically, it this this process has two main goals. One of them is to return the electron carriers to their primary empty state. In other words, basically oxidize them so that. Um, and the second goal is to use the energy uh, from those electrons to make ATP. Um, basically, if we don't if we don't oxidize the, the electron carriers back to their empty state, um, we can't really keep the we can't keep running glycolysis, PDC, or the Krebs cycle. We have to have empty um, electron carriers so that they can basically accept electrons during these three processes. And basically, the the ETC or the or the electron transport chain is basically the process where NADH and FADH2 hand down electrons to a chain of carrier molecules, and the electrons are passed along uh, along the chain until they're given to oxygen, which basically forms water. So oxygen is the final electron accept um, acceptor and it eventually forms water. Um, yeah. So the location of the ETC, it happens in the inner mitochondrial, um, inner mitochondrial matrix. That's really important to know. Um, and it's also important to know that the mitochondria is a double membrane. So the carrier molecules of the electron transport chain use the energy of the electrons they're transporting to pump hydrogen ions out of the mitochondrial matrix and into the space between the two membranes. And this process basically creates a, a concentration gradient of hydrogen ions. Um, basically lots of hydrogen ions um, in the space between the membrane and less, and there's less hydrogen ions within the actual matrix. Um, and that's basically uh, the electron transport chain or oxidative phosphorylation. So this next slide is important because it tells you the net energy within each step. So in glycolysis, we just get two ATPs. From Krebs cycle, we get two ATPs. From electron transport chain, we get, 50, uh, we get 32 ATP, ATPs. So overall, we get 36 ATPs net ATPs because remember in glycolysis we actually got four ATPs but two of them were required for the activation of the actual process so they're not net. Um, the net energy produced throughout these three processes is 36 ATPs. Um, so now we're going to move on to anaerobic respiration. Again anaerobic means without oxygen. There's two main types alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. Um, basically, alcoholic fermentation happens in yeast in in a lot of bacteria, and lactic acid fermentation is what happens in humans and mammals. Um, <clears throat> for alcoholic fermentation, you get two ethanols as a product, and for lactic acid fermentation, you get two lactic acids as the as the product. Um, the location it happens within the cytoplasm. Um, similar to glycolysis, which also happens in the cytoplasm. Um, and it's also, basically the overall goal of anaerobic respiration is to convert NADH to NAD plus to use in glycolysis. And um, 
basically the the two ATPs are produced within anaerobic respiration. So with aerobic respiration, you have the potential to produce 36 net ATPs, but if there's no oxygen present, then it can only undergo anaerobic respiration and you can only get two ATPs. And that's all. Thank you for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe, comment, and like. Follow me on Twitter, and there's my Facebook link. Thank you.